Okay, good morning. So today we will be on starting on um, page 266 with John Solders. Um, it's a cuff story. Before we do that, let's do our normal, um, our normal habits. Um, so we want, we're going to start with our, our gratitude. So I'm so grateful for everything that um, that life is bringing to me and working through me. It's just been it's an incredible journey. It's been um, challenging at times, but it's um, it's so worth it. So I'm so, so grateful for this opportunity to be doing what I'm doing. I'm so grateful for my boyfriend for standing beside me and um, putting up with me through all of this because <laughs> it gets quite intense at times. Um, I'm so grateful for my parents. I'm so grateful for um, the positive results that we've had over the weekend. I'm just so grateful for my best friend and for all of my dear friends. And I'm just, um, just so grateful for everything that I have going on in my life. So today, um, I'm going to continue with doing my daily DMOs. Um, I'm going to continue working on getting my ad up and running. Um, I'm close, but I still haven't got there. I also, my goal is either, um, is to go to get my front license plate put on my vehicle, um, either today or tomorrow. So I haven't decided if I want to do a, so anyway, it would be either today or tomorrow. And, um, I might actually see if I can schedule an appointment. They told me I didn't need to, but I think I might anyway. Um, anyway, with that being said, I know there's lots of other things that I need to do, but so I've written them, I've started writing them down, um, which I do anyway, but anyway, enough babbling. Let's go on to our morning meditation. So take a deep breath, a deep breath of life. The Talmud says every blade of grass has an angel leaning over it, whispering, grow, grow, grow. That blade of grass will press through cement, seeking the light. And that same pull of becoming is on and in you. It is the spiral pull of becoming that is everywhere present in the universe, for the universe itself is ever seeking fuller, freer, expanded life. And you are part of this wondrous spiral of becoming. Your very DNA is a spiral. And you feel that pull to the more. Learning to work in concert and cooperation with the great laws of the universe. Open doors of possibilities that prior would have seemed completely impossible and only for the few, not you. But now, through your interest, your study, and your willingness, you're beginning to understand that not only is dream building your right, but your responsibility. For you have come here to give the gift of you, without which the fabric of creation is incomplete. For you did not create you. You can't even breathe you. You're being breathed by the great spirit of life itself, and something wonderful is happening with you right now. It is this thing called life. You've been given a mind and a body, emotions and spirit. You are spirit having a human experience, using the mind and body and emotions as your expressing field for what you ultimately will choose as the demonstration of the life you know. So in this sacred moment, Activate the faculties you have and know this, you are an image maker, made in the image and after the likeness of the one who gives you life, your mind thinks in pictures. Okay. 
So I hope you guys enjoy that as much as I do. It just really helps me get grounded and, um, and put my intention right where it needs to be to center me and to just get into the, into the flow of what we're doing. So on that note, let's go ahead and get started. Again, we're on page 266, the um, success story of John Solidor. So I was brought to graduate. I was about to graduate from Satan Hall University in Northern, in Northern New Jersey. It was 1983. And at the time I was working part-time selling health club memberships in a Nautilus facility. If you remember back to the old Nautilus equipment that came out in Florida, a friend of mine named Tommy Husted, Husted, a very elite wrestler at Lehigh University who worked out at the facility, introduced me to health clubs, to the health club's owner, Dave. Dave starts to explain about this business that he and Tommy had gotten involved with called Herbalife. He explained to me that I have my own business as well for $32. At that time, $32 was a lot of money for me. To put it in perspective, my vehicle at school was an old U.S. mail jeep, like the ones they still use today. I gave a check to Tommy and asked him to hold it for a few for a couple of days so I could cover it. He graciously did that. That night I got home, did my homework, and finished up around 10 p.m. I pulled out my new Herbalife distributor kit and looked through the magazine, the Herbalife journal that came with it. On the cover was Tish Rochin. She lived in a place called Plano, Texas. I didn't know who Tish Rochin was, and I didn't know where Plano, Texas was. But what I did know from reading the magazine that was that Tish had earned $250,000 that previous year. For someone who had trouble covering a check for $32, that was inspiring. I opened the career book and inside were circles and diagrams. I, looked at, I started to look at the marketing plan and took out a yellow legal plate pad. I put some names in the circles. I stayed up till 4 a.m. that morning, putting names in circles and making mathematical projections of what would happen with this Herbalife pay plan. By 4 a.m., I had made a million dollars on paper. <laughs> I thought, this is a pretty simple business. This plan makes sense. Whoever, whatever genius had put this business together, it was making total sense to me. Fast forward 30 days. I graduated from Satan Hall University. At that point in my life, I was very liberal thinking. I was a left-wing person. I believed that business was bad. And if you owned a business, you were probably getting over <laughs> one over on people. At my graduation, I found that the commencement speaker was going to be President Ronald Wilson Reagan. I didn't like him for a variety of reasons, one of which was that he'd fired the air, con air traffic controllers. I felt like he was a union buster and I, I am from a very pro-union family. I didn't wanna go, but my father who was still alive at that point said to me, you know what, we respect the office even though we don't like the guy, you need to go. You worked hard all these years to get this degree, you need to go. I'm glad he had, had that position on things. I ended up going begrudgingly and I was one of those guys. I had my arms folded the whole session. During the speech, President Reagan talked about some basic ideas, things like entrepreneurship and freedom. He discussed that when he was young, he met a wealthy man and asked him, can you help me find a job? The wealthy man replied, well, do you really want a job or do you want a career? I want a career. That's something you have to find. That day, I began to understand that I already was being mentored a little by my upline in Herbalife. I'd been to several small meetings at local hotels, but there was going to be a much more ex extensive one training the following month with the co-founder, Larry Thompson. I'd heard so much about Larry, I felt it, it was an excellent time to take that step and attend. The problem was nobody in my upline had reliable transportation. I had my, my mail Jeep but that wasn't going to make the four hour drive from New Jersey to Hartford, Connecticut. My friend Tommy didn't have a car either. So he ended up asking his dad to borrow his old station wagon. Thankfully his dad said yes. So Tommy, me and three other people we had recruited drove off to Hartford and stayed overnight in a hotel. The next day we got up and went to the training. I'd never been to anything like that in my life. There were at least 2000 people there from Boston to New York and DC, a vast area. When Larry comes out on stage, it's a magical moment. There was a lot of outstanding leadership in the room and having Larry there in person speaking was a huge deal. There was compelling things Larry said that day that I still use in my business 36 years later. The number one th th being the mantra he had learned and passed on to us. For things to change, you have to change. For things to get better, you have to get better. 
So again, I'm going to reiterate that for things to change, you have to change. For things to get better, you have to get better. It was the first time that I'd heard those type of words articulated by someone. Larry's a stranger to me. He's an executive at this big company that I joined, and I'm a total nobody. I was just a kid out there in the audience, but that message was critical, not only for me, for my career, but for my life. My upbringing was one where everything was the government's fault, or it was the politician's fault, or it was the union's fault, or it was the contractor's fault. It was someone else's fault. Failure was always somebody else's responsibility, not your own. I grew up in that kind of family. My, you know, I, my, my dad was a union guy and I went on to become, you know, a union. I was in the union for, from the time I was 16. <laughs> and, you know, so, so that day I, for, for things to change, I have to change for things to get better. I have, you have to get better. I can say it in my sleep and I can say it that in Spanish and French, believe it or not, Larry was communicating a message related to him and he was already hugely successful in his professional life as a result of that messaging. Hearing that one idea from Larry was incredibly eye-opening and it pointed me in the right direction mentally. When I initially joined Herbalife, my distributor kit came with the Larry's, the Larry's the Millionaire training tapes, but I hadn't listened to them. My US mail Jeep didn't come with a cassette player and I didn't own a cassette player at, the, at home, so I had no way to listen to the tapes. However, on the four hour drive home that, from that training, we all listened to them in Tommy's dad's car. I couldn't believe how funny Larry was on these tapes. He could be a stand-up comedian with the other with the stuff that's on there. But what was right is all, all is all that in all that humor, there was so much wisdom. We also what also spoke to me when listening to those tapes was the fact that conceptually anyone could do this business. Larry and the other people who spoke at that meeting that day illustrated that point, especially Tish Roshan, the lady truck driver who was making $250,000 a year. Mark Hughes and Larry Thompson created a brilliant business plan with Herbalite. Take ordinary people and get them successful. Show off every day common people having success. When I joined Herbalife, the company was having a $140 a million year. I understood this was a concept-driven business. Today, I listen to some of our colleagues in the industry who are trainers, and they're trying to teach technique instead of teaching concepts. I got from Larry that day in Hartford and listening to the millionaire training were concepts. For example, he didn't say, go down to the local bank and stand at the bank line at 10 a.m. and talk to the first three ladies wearing dresses. No, Larry said, talk to anyone who breathes. Now, that's a concept. Do they have to wear a dress? No. Could they wear shorts? Yeah. Could they be young? Yeah. Could they be old? Yeah. That's what I got from the millionaire training back in 1983, concepts versus techniques. That is a big difference. So I hope you guys understand that there's a huge difference between concepts and techniques. Most people out there aren't actually teaching um, techniques, and we are learning concepts as well as some techniques. But the, um, the meat of it is the concepts. The manner training was straightforward because it was only two cassettes. I wasn't like you, you bought this bag, this bag, this big, huge seven week training program and had to listen to 19 different tapes. It was simplified. You would listen, flip over the tape and then listen to the other side. That was all there was that, that, that was where we started. What Larry taught was simple enough. If you listened once, you got some, if you listened a second time, you got a little more. If you listened a third time, you got a little more but you metabolized it as you listened to it repeatedly. And that's why we're doing this book study over and over again right now. The millionaire training had so many concepts that I needed to hear over and over. I say 9,000 times, times. I'm not exaggerating how many times I've listened. I actually wore out the tapes and had to buy a new set every six months because I'd listened to them so often. How you learn something is by repetition. When you continually listen to do some to something until you get it, and then it becomes yours once you get it, but you still keep listening to it because you always miss something. What I found with these tapes is there's so much information that you have to go back, listen again, go back, listen again, read again. However, you're learning to become professional at something. Experts say you have to do it 10,000 times. When it comes to learning, part of that involves hearing the same thing repeatedly. Then of course, the other part is to that is applying what you've learned. It's the one thing to listen to it but if you don't apply it, you didn't learn. The best teacher in our business is to tell, show, try, do. And we all know to do, to, 
And we all know to do part is the hard part, right? To do that part is the hard part. I was fortunate enough to meet Larry's two mentors, Jim Rohn and Bobby DePew, who inspired Larry's trainings. I met Jim at long at a long lunch meeting in Dallas many years ago. I met Bobby, De, Bobby through Larry back in the early 1990s. I would go out to California occasionally to, to visit Larry on his ranch. One time when I was in New York, he called and said, hey, Bobby's going to be out there where you're at, where you're, where you're out, while you're out here. I couldn't believe my luck. I was going to meet the, the famous Bobby DePew. I went to California and spent an afternoon with Bobby. I didn't know whether Larry had something else to do or he just figured, hey, you know what? Let me stay out of this, uh, stay out of this and you talk to him directly. I was skipping a generation. Larry was my mentor. I'm talking to his mentor. And Bobby and I sat on the back deck for five hours. I just listened to this guy and relished the fact that I was getting the, to talk with one of the original creators of this industry. He helped orchestrate many of the compensation models, pay plans, and training that Larry would often reference. He passed away shortly after that, but what an afternoon that was. As I look back on my, 30, on, on my 36 years now, getting to spend an afternoon with my mentor's men, mentor and pick his brain just two guys sitting on the port on a back deck in California, chewing the fat. It was a great opportunity. And somewhere I've got my notes from that day. What we do affects so many people generationally. We don't even realize the lives we touch. I have a huge organization of Hispanic leaders in my company. And one of them last week said to me, you're Tata. I speak some Spanish, but I was like, Tata. I know that's good because Tata means grandpa in Spanish. To put it in perspective, if I'm the grandfather, then Larry's the great grandfather. Even though my distributors don't know Larry, they know me. How my organizations are like that? How many organizations are like that? Then Bobby and Jim Rohn as well. We have a responsibility to teach the right things to the next generation. And that's what we're doing here. The last three th years have been incredible. And currently, I'm working as hard as I did when I was young. Maybe not that hard working, but pretty hard traveling a lot and seeing new parts of the world. After the recent passing, passing of my intern's mentor, it caused me to reflect on the people in my life that helped me along the way, and Larry is one of them. I look back on the day that Larry came to Hartford to speak. He didn't know there'd be a guy in the audience who got it. He probably hoped that there were a lot of guys in the audience that likely did it, but once one got it at least. My oldest daughter is starting to do some public speaking on the situation that came into her life that was a very negative situation, and she's trying to turn it into a positive. A couple of weeks ago, she was asked to speak it to some people who are on the same road that she's on. Before her speech, I called her and told her something that Larry had taught me. That is, if there's one who gets it, you did your job. If there's one who changes something, you did your job. Yes, you want them all to get it, but they're not all going to get it. They're going to be distracted. There are days when they're going to be on their cell phones, they're going to be thinking of something else, whatever. It's if there's one person, one person's life you impact that day, you did your job. You can put your head on the pillow at, at night and you know you did what you're supposed to do. I'm going to tie another concept of Larry's as well. When my daughter had her challenge and we were leaving the institution that she was treated at, I said to her, you know what begins now? She said, I know dad, one day at a time a brick at a time, process by process. The funny thing is that's construction talk. That's not multi-level. I tell that to my kids and distributors all the time. It's a phrase that applies to everything. So once again, how do you take all that stuff that you've been doing in your business and use them in your life? How do you apply those things when things are dire? Well, one day at a time, a brick at a time, process by process. My daughter got it and she's working at it and it's a struggle, but she's doing great. Larry has a legacy that has done so much for so many. When I think back on the influence of his, uh, he has had on me, I think of several things. Number one is being a good student. I would say that something many people wrestle with because we all want to be authoritative in our field and be good students. That takes a continual application of listening, reading, taking notes, and asking questions. Secondly, though, by being a good student, this is an applied science. And my other multi, non-multi-level multi -level life, of course, I've coached many different sports. And I tell people the only way to figure out what you're, going, what you're doing is to get out there and get your nose bloodied. 
Nobody likes to get their nose bloody, but that's really just the reality of sports, the reality of business, and the reality of life. Your nose gets bloodied sometimes, and it doesn't feel good, but that's how you're going to learn. To build on that, even if, you've, even if you listen to everything, you read everything, and you've got a million notebooks filled with notes, if you don't go out and talk to somebody, I guarantee your business won't work. If you don't speak to your next door neighbor this afternoon when you see them getting his mail and mention it to him, whatever it is you're marketing, all the information you've learned is for not. It's an applied science. You have to know how to work with people. And these are things I learned from Larry and from a few and from other men who are serious about discipline as well. If you said you were going to do this, you better do this. Hold them, not because you're trying to be nasty, but because you want them to succeed. And if they're if they succeed once, then they can succeed once and again and again and again. That's another concept I learned from Larry. If one can do it, all can do it. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. And so I can, um, I just want to reiterate on this, you know, for things to change, you've got to change for things to get better. You've got to get better. It's so, so true. And it's, it, that's really, um, I, I live from that. I'm always learning and growing. And I've been doing this for a while now. I've just been turned on to this book, to, onto this, um, to Larry Thompson last August, this past August. Um, so his training is new to me. His concepts are similar to some that I've learned in the past, but we've got to stay in that, not that learning, you know, always be open to learning, always be open to experiencing something new from the same material over and over. The more that we go through the same material, the, so it's repetition, right? When we keep repeating and repeating and repeating, we will get it. We will understand it. It'll become part of our DNA and we'll be able to reverberate it all the time without having to read it or have, having to think about it. So I really want you to, to really put that on today. Be that person. Go out and talk to people. Talk to, I don't care if you're doing it online, if you're doing it on, in, in a store, if you're doing it um, on the street, whatever you're doing. Just talk to people, talk to 10 people every day. That's our daily DMO. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the next one. We're the next, we are now on page 275 with Dan McCormick, the top global distributor of new skin. I'm here in my home in Coto de Casa, California. When I first started network marketing, I was 19, a 19 year old man. At only 12 years old, I got my first job at the Seattle Supersonics Racket and Health Club for $2.35 per hour. Every day I went, <laughs> I think that's when I started working is when it was um, $2.35 was, um, was the, the normal wage. Every day I went to the, that club because it felt like home, warmer than home actually. I took my pay as credit so that I could hang out and play tennis. It was $20 an hour for court time. I washed towels and did the laundry, vacuumed the courts. It was indoors because of the, because of the rain in Seattle. I watched people have a life that I never saw growing up in a single parent home. People had freedom, had time freedom in the middle of the day to come and play tennis. And I remember their names even to this day. I remember the airline pilot, the name of the salesperson. I remember the name, the people who was in the military. I remember the world-class athletes. Some of the greatest athletes that I ever, that ever lived came to either work out, play for the Sonics or were trained or were playing tennis. They had what I didn't have, and that was money, but they loved what they did. I loved tennis, but I really wanted more than I had. My mom was brilliant because every time I would ask for money, she said, son, you better make a lot of money because when you get older, you're going to need it. You're always asking for money. A lot of times parents would say, what do you think? Money grows on trees. My mom said something different. I met a man there who, worked, who built tennis courts. He owned his own company and his partner he and his partner and he and he were and he were the two I was sorry um and they were top two of the top tennis players in the now northwest they asked me to work for them to build tennis courts at the time I was a spoiled rotten young arrogant cocky no self self-esteem no self-worth individual horrible in school horrible people skills I just love tennis and I went there every day to play tennis this guy asked me to work for him and he said he would pay me $5 an hour. I learned what it was like to work. I mean, this guy really put me to work, taught me to work, corrected me when I was wrong. And it was just unbelievable. 
I did th that until I graduated from high school and went to Washington State University. I always tell people that I finished college in two weeks. The following summer, after working in the tennis clubs again and building tennis courts, an ad in the newspaper showed up that said, are you making what you're worth? I live in Beverly Hills, California. I drive a Clinette and I made $96,000 in the health and nutrition industry supervisory positions available. Here's what was weird. That ad showed up in the newspaper from a group of distributors from Canada. I was scared to call it because I had no background in supervision or business. I used to look at the ads every day because it was inspiring to see what opportunities would be out there. I didn't know what I was going to do besides build tennis courts or string tennis rackets and play tennis. This ad came out on a Sunday and stayed in the paper for four days in a row. Finally, I looked at my mom and said, they must be desperate because this ad is still in the paper. I kid you not. I remember the phone called because it was, it was a live answering service that said somebody would call me back. I remember sitting at my desk in the office I set up because I wanted to be in the business somehow. When the phone call came in, a guy asked me some questions, just like Gary, Larry trained them. Tell me about your business background, he said. I was nervous. I really didn't want to tell him that I worked at a tennis club, but I must have done okay because he invited me to the Greenwood Inn in Bellevue, Washington, Northeast 8th for an opportunity meeting. I said, how am I going to recognize you? I'm a really big guy with the wide part. I had so much hair at the time. I had no idea what, what he was talking about with the wide part program. I found him and he had got this, his flip book out. He started going through the program with me. He talked about the company history. He told me about the products. He told me about the opportunity. And then he started telling me stories of people who were my age, Santo Roberto, Ron Trichard, people who were literally 22 to 23 years old. I was 19 and they were out there beating the streets, making sales and weight loss. August 12th, 1982 was the day my life changed forever because that night, not only did my upline tell me about a book to read, but he gave me the millionaire training cassette tapes. Now learning on those cassette tapes back in the day was a novelty. I wasn't a good student. I wasn't a good learner, but I want people to appreciate what this meant to me. I'm laying in my bed in my room and I plug in the millionaire training tape, side A. I promise, I promise you, if you slept more than an eight hour straight, if you, if you slept more than an eight hour, than an hour straight for the next week, that would be, have been amazing. There was something that came over me that was so powerful. I had so much adrenaline. I found my life's calling. You have to understand, I was so much in so much pain as a kid because I didn't know what there was in life for me outside of tennis. Here, I saw the dream. I saw the opportunity. I knew my skill level could grow into it. I was an immature, young, I was immature beyond belief. My mom came to the meeting with me. I had a couple of thousand dollars saved away from building my tennis courts at $5 an hour. There was only 30 or so people at the meeting. Here's my application, I told my sponsor. He invited me to go out to his car. He opens the trunk and says, how much product would you like to start with? The senior consultant package is a good way to start because it has the biggest discount available. I wrote him a check for $296 right there. Walked away with my products and a new lease on life. About a month later, Larry came to Seattle and it was the big training. I've got the millionaire training cor coursing through my veins. I'm riveted. My sponsor asked me, what did you like about those cassette tapes? I was so immature. I was so at a loss for how to communicate. And I was too embarrassed to say, I just wanted the money. That was at a time when I believed money would fix everything. I imagined how cool it would be if I could find that guy and to be able to show my friends who laughed at me for dropping out of college that I was right. Two weeks into college, I dropped out. I say finished college in two weeks. I didn't have the mental capacity to do it. My brain didn't function there in that environment. So I'm gonna um, pause here for today because I do wanna, I just wanna talk for a minute on this. So when you really start immersing yourself and you, a lot of us start when we're young, we're all so immature and we don't understand the powerful possibilities that are out there. You know, so no matter what you're deciding to do, go out there and do whatever you're, whatever's calling you to do. But these principles in this book is going to help you through your life, no matter what you decide to do, whether it's to do network marketing with, with me and with all the others that are 
do, or being so successful in this business, or if you decide you want to own a massage parlor, or you want to become an app, you know, an athlete, whatever you decide to do, repetition is always, always important to continually do the same thing over and over until you get it, until it becomes part of you. You know, the more that we can really learn this and teach it, one of the best ways to do it, it is you do need to take action. When you're going out and talking to people, that's an action step. When you are talking and sharing these concepts, you're actually embedding that DNA into your DNA. You're embedding these teachings, these concepts into your whole soul. So go out there today and share from your heart, but also do it with, with compassion and with intent. So on that note, I will see you tomorrow. You have a wonderful day.